Hello everybody, it's Whiskey11 and welcome back to the Gaming Lounge. And in this episode of our Silent Hunter Let's Play, Silent Hunter 4 Let's Play, we are picking up on the first mission in the USS Gato. And I've skipped ahead a bit because quite honestly, where we what happened before this really wasn't all that interesting. So sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, let's go sink some Japanese shipping. Uh, we are on our first patrol, the USS Gato. We've just got upgraded to the Gato class. And thank God, it's finally here. This boat is so much nicer. We have enough torpedoes forward now that we can actually launch two separate attacks on convoys. Um, it is a little challenging based upon uh, my initial observations. And the reason for that challenge has to do with the fact that the uh, the way that this you measure distances in this game is really, really hard. Um, there's no easy way to tweak distances or anything like that. And so as a result, you kind of, uh, kind of, I kind of struggle a little bit with it, I guess. So, all right. So we, we are, uh, yeah, I was going to say, um. I have a hard time believing that there is no protection at Malik Yok at all. Malek Yok? I, I don't know how you say that. Help. <laughs> I need somebody. Help. Anybody. Help. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> So, as I've pointed out before in the past, one of the hardest parts about being in a fleet boat is that uh, you don't get the electric torpedo for quite some time. And uh, that makes it very, very difficult to deal with certain things, specifically uh, destroyers. However, once we do get the electric torpedo, things become significantly easier. Uh... <clears throat> yeah. No, not really. 10,000 tons there. The one thing that does suck about the Gato class is it is, uh, it is, it does sit much deeper under, uh, a periscope depth than the other U.S. fleet boats do. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! We've got our, our, uh, scuba crew again. Watching the deck. <laughs> <clears throat> so let's, uh. Oh, hell. Alright, well. Let's just do that then. Let's just go straight north. Kind of come back around this way. Let's. I think we can risk being on the surface. Well, we probably don't want to risk being on the surface too close. Yeah, let's come out just a little bit further with this. And as we get closer and closer in, we will uh we will we will dive down to periscope depth and Oh, that's not a ship, but that is, uh, something that could potentially shoot at us and report our location to, uh, to the destroyer, so. Yeah, we're going to make best use of our, uh, you know, relative stealth here. <laughs> Got beautiful day, it looks like, and uh Yes, sir. Ahead one third. Ahead one third. So disappointed in my submarine in my scuba crew though, I mean. Alright, well we'll uh we'll wake them all up and uh That's not a merchant. Ship spotted. Wrong way. Ship spotted. Bearing. Three, four, six. Wrong way. 
Jeez, really? <laughs> yeah, he's there. Holy crap, I can barely see him. We're gonna creep in closer. We got so much depth underneath this ship. Over a thousand feet of depth right now. <laughs> Contact. Warship. Moving away. Bearing. Okay. Two, Long range. That would be our freighter that we are looking for. We are going to have a, a hard time getting an accurate range estimation on this, but uh, it really doesn't matter any because he's stationary. So, like, none of this information right here matters because he because he's stationary. And, uh, well, you know. Oops. So we know, like, angle on bow, we can set that to that. So long as it's over, ooh, that almost ended up being the right uh, distance right off the bat. <clears throat> definitely, you definitely have. What, what? Really? Is that how far we are? Yeah, I guess that's pretty close. Well, we definitely need to carry on in for a little bit. Yes, yes. Wow, his patrol circle is pretty aggressive. So according to this, uh, we should be in range of our tanker, just barely. <laughs> Let's get another range finding here, and like I said, the actual range doesn't matter as long as we are in range, and we are looking at uh, that 9,000 range is our, our, our max. Oop, not far enough. Oof. The only reason I'm trying to get an accurate range estimation is because we need to know exactly, you know, we need to know what that distance is so that we can, uh, so that we can, uh, know when we're in, god dang. Well, what the heck? It didn't remember. Urgh. You goobers. What? This number didn't change when I... <laughs> so I have a hard time believing that that's the case there. Look at that. Like the the TDC is broken or something. Well, that's at least a little bit closer, but so I, I realize I didn't explain this in any of the other episodes. That's pretty good. We got a little ways to go. I realize I didn't explain this in any of the previous episodes, but. Uh, We'll go over the TDC wheels here shortly, yes, and returning to course, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. Course, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so 7,000 yards. That's going to be way short. So this dial here, this one, is the range. This is angle on bow, and this is speed. And the, the entire premise of this is to... Uh, so the statimeter, as this is called, this is our range-finding device. Um, because we know the mast height, or the measurement height, on the ship that we are trying to get a range on, um, we can calculate what the range is based upon the angle between the two images. And uh, that's trigonometry. It's more trig than I, I care to go over in, in a YouTube video. But uh, that's how the statimeter works. Um, various nations use different, different methodology, but for the most part, I think the statimeter was fairly standard across the board. That seems to be about accurate. So we can do some quick maths here. One degree. Okay. So this is, this is the dead center line. It looks like about 353 degrees. So if we go to the end of the ship here, that's about uh, 352 and a half. <laughs> so we have less than half a degree to work with here in order to get uh, our torpedoes off successfully without uh, running into issues. Um, so we definitely don't want to <clears throat> crank in too much information on the offset angle here. Um, let's see. We identified it as a draft of 29 and a half feet. So let's dump these guys to the mid-20s. Or low mid-20s. We got to put him on low speed because he's 7,000 some odd yards out. Uh, these torpedoes have a 9,000 yard range. However, 31 and a half knots to get there. So, yeah. We're getting close to having those uh, torpedoes uh, have their uh, magnetic detonators removed permanently. I don't know if that happens after we head back to port or not. Uh, but, uh, holy crap. 450 yards to arm. Huh. Wow, I didn't know that. They made, made they make some changes there to uh, to that stuff. That's pretty neat. Alright, so once again, we don't have a whole lot of, uh, of uh, variation here because of the long distance that we're shooting. So we want to be fairly... Alright, back emergency... This is where you pray that the Mark 14 doesn't betray you. <laughs> and for those who don't know, the Mark 14 is an absolutely god-awful torpedo. But it is the only torpedo that we can... I mean, we can carry the Mark 10, but it costs us like 100, 100 renown a pop. And not only that, it has a smaller warhead. I don't want a smaller warhead. Find the Mark 14 to be just barely sufficient for most of the work that I do. <clears throat> yes, sir. We're far enough away from any uh, any real sonar threat at this point, so I. Uh oh, did we only get one torpedo hit out of that whole thing, or did it hit? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, you what? Oh yeah, they we got we got some hits on them. Huh? That that's kind of weird. Uh, I did not expect. I guess we we're closer than I thought we were. So I mean that makes sense. There is another large freighter in the area over here, but. Uh, I don't know that he's really worth going after. We might try and see if we can't poke on over to Karoror and see what happens. Um, 
We've got some other island stuff going on over here. Guam, Saipan. Oh, hey, we still got targeting info up on Guam. There must not have been anything. Truck. So disappointed that that's not that there's nothing there. There's usually so much stuff there. Yeah. Well, we're going to keep backing out of the area here. I'm fairly confident that uh, those two torpedoes should sink, I would hope, that large tanker. It's not that sturdy of a ship. Nope. The only turd to this punch bowl is if she grounds out somehow. Oh, pfft. she ain't grounding out on shit. The harbor is so deep you can't even uh, you can't even see the bottom effectively. So the only way that this would change is if um, if she ends up hitting the the concrete side barrier there. So that's ten thousand tons there. That's like two thousand. It's like eight. That would be the only other target out of this that we would attack. But you can see we have very limited... Um, we can only attack the front front half of it, and we can only attack it from... A, I mean, we could we could probably hit it from where we were at. It's about a thousand tons. That's useless. <laughs> Another useless... This, those are sub-chasers. Sink, you, you magnificent bastard. Yeah, see, this is what I was talking... I, I mentioned it in a previous episode. These tankers are kind of hard to sink. Um, with just a few torpedoes and a little bit of flooding. Our other, if had our other torpedo gone off, I wouldn't have any question about it, but... We might have to put another one into this dude. I don't know that he's sinking. Also, their destroyer is completely inept. <laughs> Ship spotted. <clears throat> Let's not get too far away from him. We're not going to watch it, see if that T3 tanker... Look, look at him. Or not, he's not a T3, sorry. He's a... Ooh, is that a ship? What kind of ship are we? Oh, she sank. <laughs> we should line up this shot. It's not a, it's not worth the torpedoes that I'd put into it, but it'd be kind of fun to do it. It's either this or there's a Hog Island freighter that has a uh, similar. Maybe it's not Hog Island freighter. We'll keep cycling through here. This is definitely not a tanker of any sort, huh? Well, apparently that's uh, that's what the game. Small old European tanker. That's what the game says it is. I could have swore this was, uh... Well, alright. Well, we'll go back to it and... Might as well add to the confusion of the area here. And put it under two. Alright, so... I'm going to guess about 8 knots for right now. Using our statimeter here. At least we can clearly see this dude. So that we can get a... What? Need a little bit further out on the angle on bow. We need... That's pretty close. That's nearly spot on. I don't know why it's so far off. The, uh... Our actual measuring point. Usually on these ships, it's on, um... 
Usually on ships in, in this game, it's uh, merchant ships that's going to be the top of the mast. Uh, warships, it's the top of the funnel. And uh, carriers, it's the flight deck. But for whatever reason, that is not the case with this guy. Eight knots is too fast. Another range estimation here. Yeah, we just gotta go just a smidge deeper. That's pretty spot on. What? So he's seven and a half? Oh no, he's, he's seven on the nose. Here we go. He's he's pretty shallow as well. Um, none of those are the buttons I was looking for. 15 foot draft. Uh, we pretty much have to set these guys to run on the surface, I think. Because... Uh, Yeet. Torpedo in the water. Torpedo in the water. <clears throat> oh, we didn't get to watch them come out the stern tubes. Hmm. <laughs> Going for those stern shots. Oh. oh, come on! Screw you, Mark 14! Screw you! Oh, that is super annoying. I cannot wait for more reliable detonators than that. That was like a perfect shot. Neither It came in like this and was just like, Nope, I'm going down below. I mean, there is an upshot to this. He ain't going anywhere anytime soon. I mean, he's making noises like he's moving, but he ain't got no he ain't got no way to move. So we're going to patiently watch to see if our buddy down south decides that he's going to try and join this foray here. Oh, he must have pissed off the other destroyer. Oh! She seems to be a little down at the stern. A little. This ship, I don't think, has a whole lot in the way of air intakes until it gets, uh... All the way back there. Okay. So now we can reduce speed to what is effectively zero. <clears throat> Again, none of this is legitimately going to matter much. We just need to get the numbers correct. It feels kind of disgusting putting another torpedo into, into this guy. Um, speed needs to be zeroed out. <clears throat> but, alas, it is what it is. Yeah, buddy. See the torpedo doors operate, you know, in the whole nine yards. Torpedo in the water. Torpedo in the water. If there's one thing that the Mark 14 is really good at, it's not running in circles. Uh, I have not had a single Mark 14 circle run on me yet. That doesn't mean that that couldn't possibly change. But, uh... 
so far we fired quite a lot of them several million dollars worth and never had a circle run we're gonna come up to this guy up here and this is one of my favorite views watch it dud out torpedo is a dud It's just gonna like come out of the out of the woodwork. Where are you, my pretty? You didn't prematurely detonate on me, did you? All right, fine. Oh no. We were, we were just being impatient, apparently. Well, there's no apparent, apparently. We were being very impatient. Now she's going down. There is no question in my mind that that big hole there did not just sink that ship. <laughs> Zero question in my mind. All right, since we've been kind of a dick to the local merchant yes, ships... Sir. Actually, we need to go, just need to go north. She's settling by the bow. There's all that water... Oh, you are not. Yeah, you're definitely not going to survive this. Stop fighting. And just go underwater. Yeah, it, it's sinking. It thought it was going to survive. But the truth of the matter is, it ain't. That's a big hole. You don't just walk. One does not simply walk away from that hole. I mean, this guy's not walking away from anything anyway. Bye. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Yeah. All right. Ooh, another merchant ship. Okay. Wonder what kind of merchant ship we have here. Bearing, dead ahead of us. Long range. Looks like another small-ish type of merchant ship. This could be fairly... I mean, we might, we might have to get a lot of tonnage via sinking these ships. Uh, ooh... I don't recognize you. I mean, I recognize the configuration of... Yeah, there he is. Here's our high, Hog Island. He's bigger than our previous dude was. Hog Island Freighter. Angle on the bow. Looks like uh, we're about there. And this, this angle on the bow measurement is the... If he was looking at us, that's what this measurement is. I would say we got ourselves needs the angle on the bow needs to come towards us a little bit more, but um, a little less uh, range. We're on the right track. Now we just need to hone in on that range, that correct range. And by hone in on, I, I legitimately. 
That was a weird sound glitch. <laughs> By hone in on what I mean is I'm I really do mean like guess because apparently <laughs> apparently the models don't line up very well with their uh Okay, well we we nailed the speed. So I, there's another ship coming in. This is like shooting fish in a barrel, boys. All right, so now that we've kind of gotten a little bit closer here, let's uh, try and refine our shooting solution. Prepare for shooting solution. Man, I can't imagine being a submarine captain during this time frame and having to deal with this inaccurate of, of warship information that, like, your statimeter readings are completely wrong. That's pretty close. So, how deep a draft is he? He's a 25-footer. 10 feet will be fine. Um, and we're... Close enough here that I think we should be okay with, uh... What? What, torpedo tube? Alright, well, apparently I'm just weird. I and mean, that's not a question. Scuba crew still doing their work. This guy's going to miss a stern. Yeah. He caught it at the last minute. Should have probably put them both fairly fairly on the same on the same path there. Oh well. It is what it is. We hit him pretty hard there. And he doesn't exactly have a whole lot of uh depth to work with before he runs into issues with his uh, deck being underwater. So that's always a good sign. <laughs> the question is whether or not one torpedo will actually get him decks awash, or if we're going to have to yeet another one at him, or if he's just going to ram us. I mean, that's always a possibility as well. I don't like that as a possibility. Um... Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, Mr. Bill. Is his rudder like jammed or something? I mean, he's he's <laughs> One of two things has happened. We've either jammed the rudder full over Bismarck style or uh somehow by hitting all the way up here. Oh, there's a fire on the <laughs> I think I think that one torpedo is all it's going to take. I mean, the front end of the ship is still sinking, so I don't know what he is sinking about. But you can see it at the railing. The railing is very close to going completely underwater, and there it goes. Parts of it. So with that, you know, the back end is going to start going under here pretty pretty shortly. There's starting to get some water on the deck. <laughs> Who would have thought? All we got to do is breach the uh, breach that forward uh, cargo compartment, and the rest of the ship will sink itself. She's still creeping along. Is the front end still still diving? Kind of appears to be so. It's kind of hard to tell using that, that section of railing right there to kind of gauge it. 
It might not. Might not be going down any further. She is slowing. I, I think our... Sometimes the seagulls, when you're close to land, they will uh, occupy the airspace around your uh, periscope. I mean, at this point... Oh, that range estimation ain't going to be horribly accurate, but... Uh, two knots is not very accurate. I think if we set this guy to high, I think it'll be harder for us to miss. Yeah. So provided it goes off, which it is a Mark 14, it is using the contact influence detonator, it is traveling at high speed, there's a very, very high possibility that uh, it's not going to go off. That is just one of the most infuriating <laughs> sounds in the world. Ugh. Eat another one. <laughs> just irritated is all. Bloop. We've set this one to run just a smidge deeper in the hopes that uh, between him changing his angle and the whole angle, something just exploded. I'm, I'm thinking it's the torpedo that I just launched that dudded. There we go. Now she will definitely go underwater. The other torpedo didn't miss it. Dudded, you turd. That other ship is off on the horizon, though. You can see, just see him right there. That is a tanker of sorts. There is another... Oh, sampan. <laughs> this dude's just tra traveling into the area like, Hey, man! I, see, I saw your fire. Thought I could uh, maybe come and help a little bit. And the dude's like, No! No! Get away! Get away! Okay, so we are about there. I'm gonna guess about seven knots, because that's where everybody else has been at coming hot and heavy into their death. Pretty close. I did not realize we were quite this far. Well, that's uh, too far. Split the difference. Still need to come this way just a smidge. So we're fairly close to on the right path. Gotta love it when your, your initial shooting solution doesn't require a whole lot in the way of refinement. Of course, having access to map contacts is a huge benefit. Feels kind of cheatish, a little bit. Yes, sir. Ahead, standard. Quit fighting. Just go underwater. You this giant burning ball of blah. This dude. I can't imagine what this guy is thinking right now. He's like, huh, I wonder what that fire is off in the distance. Uh, we'll just kind of keep uh, trolling along here, and uh, everything should be good. I think we'll be all right. 
Meanwhile, I'm setting up for yet another torpedo attack. <laughs> Tube one ready, sir. Three, three, nine. Long range. All right. So let's uh, get our hopefully now significantly more accurate so measurements. Well, bam. Need to adjust this guy. Oh, he's further than that out. Yeah. Got to come about there. Look at how perfect that guy is. Speed's wrong. Speed is still wrong. All right, we got to eat it. Firing tube one. Firing tube five. Firing tube two. It's like shooting fish in a barrel over here. That dude is still afloat. I mean, not for long, but he's still afloat. In the water. Meanwhile, we're just we're just leaving a, a, a wake of freaking sinking ships. Let's get a merchant eye view of the impending doom. Oh no! Torpedo! Torpedo is a dud! Torpedo is a dud! Torpedo is a dud. That's a lot of duds in this engagement. <laughs> this this trip, rather. Do you are you still do you still count as being alive? Because I'm pretty sure you're dead. Oh, yeah, that, that could be this guy, finally. Meanwhile, this homie is... He did. He's still chugging along. But uh, I don't anticipate that lasting very long. Given how much of his ship is enveloped in fire at the moment. And we have uh, three torpedoes up front. And four out back. I don't think we're going to do much of anything else aside from uh, head back to base now. Jeez. Whoa. Whoa! What's exploding? Probably this ship. Or it was the torpedo that dudded. That's probably more accurate. Because the Mark 14 is a super reliable torpedo. I love how quickly the tankers all sink. It's good stuff. We've gotten some decent, uh, decent, some decent tonnage on this trip, though. One, two, three, four, five, six. This will probably be 70,000 tons. I don't think you're recovering this one, Captain. I think you should uh, just go ahead and abandon ship now. <laughs> Still not giving us the kill credit. I've seen ships linger at this before. I mean, 
he's definitely going down. But I have seen battleships linger at depth like this, where the only thing that was exposed is the pagoda mast. And to hit him, you had to set the torpedo depth deep enough to actually go off. Because otherwise it would just travel right over top of the... Right over top of the, the, the deck of the ship. I mean... That's a sampan. We don't we don't we don't care about his types around here. All right. So let's start our uh, a path back now cuz we we've got a a fairly long and arduous trip back to to Loggy. With we're going to be crossing over some of the busiest shipping lanes in uh, the game right now. Oh, oops, sorry, crew. Fatigue's at one hundred percent, sir. Yeah, I just no, oh, it's not though. Whatever. What's what's our what's our morale at? Normal. I would I would hope so. We've had a very I mean, we've had a very successful career in general in this game. So let's get our nav tools up. Distance is 1500 and we got 34 to go. Okay, 34 to end. So zero fuel. Enemy task force. See, we need to spend more time in the Bismarck Sea, I think. I know that's like, we've not done much of anything else, but I just, there's not really, um, I mean, we can run all the way up to Saipan, we can run to all those places, but at the end of the day, it's not going to be of huge help. Simply by virtue of, there's just, there's just not much in, in, in you know, raiding ports like we've been doing. There's just not a whole lot there. Um, you know, Saipan is a really deep port. Guam, Tinian's not. Guam is a fairly deep port. So those are those are both decent places to go attack because your attack vectors are very nice. But uh, so marshals are, are going to be the next island chain that they go after. I think this is Bikini Atoll. It's hard to remember where, where all of these are. It's even harder to recognize when you don't see the giant hole that we, we left in it during uh, Phoenix Island. That, that seems like a pretty neat place. Um, when, you, when you can't see the... <laughs> American Small. Uh, when you can't see the giant hole we left from the uh, Castle Bravo nuclear test. I mean, we did kind of create a very deep harbor by detonating a nuclear weapon. Normally, I would be ashamed of these things, but I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> Reload. All right, well, uh, returning to course. Returning sir. To course. Yes, sir. Yeah, there you go. Intelligence needs updated enemy aircraft carrier presence and revolve. Recon the area if the situation permits. Infiltrate the anchors and photograph any aircraft carriers encountered. Oh. <clears throat> oh. We just got sent on what is probably the single hardest mission that we could possibly take at this point in the war with our current complement of torpedoes. All right. Let's do it. Let's set course for a ball and uh Yes, sir. Returning to We are going to save yes, every sir. single torpedo that we have for the destroyer at the entrance to the port. There's just there's not going to be anything else that we can do to accomplish anything else. But if they say that there's an aircraft carrier in Rabal, that means there's an aircraft carrier in Rabal, which means that we can sink it, which means that we can get tonnage, which means that I am a happy camper. We will get to the area and we will figure it out. 
Kamsa pack. Oh. Uh. What kind of shit? It's a small convoy. You know what that is. I'm not interested. Unless that small convoy is a troop carrier. I'm I'm just not I'm just not game. Three one seven. He's off this way, but he's gonna be behind us. Yeah. Don't care. <clears throat> be nice if that bad weather actually held out one of the best parts about bad weather in this in this game <laughs> it's gonna be the kind of ship that i want to sink nope it's a sand pan which i'm starting to think i should want to sink because uh clearly there's too many of them in the area but uh anyway where i was going at with that is when, we, when it comes to attacking destroyers, we've got to do a lot of planning. That's an aircraft. That's still an aircraft. So we, we've got a couple of different problems in, in this mission. Number one is getting into the into the harbor. Um, it's got to be done at night, and, uh, man, I just, uh, it makes me nervous. I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. This is such a hard mission to do. Well, let's see if there's even anything over there, first and foremost, by sending out our seaplane. So the way that these photo recon missions work is we have to get visual confirmation. We actually have to see the carrier. We actually have to be able to take a picture of it then, and it has to be through the periscope. So we have to be able to see it, lock it, and then the icon will show up and we can take the picture. Um, again, the issue that I have with this mission is that we have nothing but steam torpedoes. Oh, God, there are carriers. I can see it already. There's a couple of them, it looks like. The problem that we have is all that we have to take care of the escorts in the area are steam torpedoes. Steam torpedoes are notoriously incapable of taking out destroyers. <laughs> God, that's a Taiho, even! Holy crap! And we got a Shikaku! Oh. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about! Oh, there's three destroyers! <sighs> well, you know what they say. Life is too short to give a damn, so let's, uh... We've got a mission, gosh dang it, and we're gonna we're gonna accomplish it. Thankfully there's nothing in Rabal that's worth actually like going deep into Rabal for. So we just need to be exceptionally we just need to pay better attention to what's going on with uh, escorts in the area. <clears throat> kind of mark their their paths a little bit. I'm pretty sure that's an escort. Um it is early or late enough at night that we could probably um we could probably accomplish this mission. Where's Oh wow, yeah. I mean we, we might we might even be able to do this without uh without too much issue. Hmm. Well, you know what time it is. It's time for us to save. Save again. <laughs> save again. Because we've got the perfect opportunity to sink two aircraft carriers that's important but we're gonna have to do that in the next video because we've reached the end of our let's play allotment time in this video <clears throat> so i'm whiskey one i'm gonna sign us out of the gaming lounge hit the notification bell if you guys haven't already to be notified when new videos come out check out the discord server there's a link to that in the description and if you haven't already like comment subscribe thanks for watching